Hey guys, and welcome to today's video. My name is Nick uh, from Old Average Brick Gaming, and we're going to be talking about airbrush maintenance. Now, airbrushing has become a massive thing in the Games Workshop hobby and in hobbies in general uh, with miniature gaming over the last what four or five years, maybe a bit longer than that. Um, it's still a relevant question. Lots of people are still asking things on Facebook uh, about what airbrushes to buy, where to go, and all the rest of it. This video assumes you've already got an airbrush and you've just started and perhaps you need some assistance with maintenance and looking after it, keeping it clean and what bits and pieces I use personally and the techniques that I use to make sure that my airbrushes are flowing free and easy, not clogging and all the rest of it. So uh, hope you enjoy this video. If you do, please do give it a uh, like. Uh, feel free to write in the comment section below and uh, if you're not a subscriber, don't forget to subscribe. Um, but other than that, yeah, enjoy the video and uh, I shall speak to you at the end. So the first thing you need is a whole bunch of bits and pieces to ensure that you can keep your airbrush clean. And the first set is a set of Q-tips or cotton earbuds, depending what country you're from, a fluid cleaning rod, uh, cleaning brushes, the little spanner that comes with your, uh, your airbrush, uh, normally comes with the kit, uh, some lubricant that also normally comes with the kit. This one actually came with one of my uh, custom micro uh, airbrushes. Some cleaning fluid, I've got some Vallejo airbrush cleaning fluid right there. A cleaning station and that's uh, that's pretty much it and some and lots of tissue paper uh, tissue paper is always good so I've got a couple of airbrushes so this one here is a 50 pound Iwata Neo uh, gravity fed and then I've also got a slightly more expensive one I think this was near enough 200 pounds it's a uh, custom Micron C airbrush uh, the Neo is I think is a point three millimeter head and the other one is a 0.23 millimeter head so just going through making sure I've got everything here so a bottle of cleaning fluid very essential now this is what a, a fluid needle uh, cleaner looks like it's basically a very sharp pointed uh, p uh, needle with a, a slightly flat side on one bit you'll see a bit closer when I come to cleaning that a bit later on bunch of brushes um, these components so far, I mean that, that fluid uh, rod is about three or four pounds, the brush is about four or five pounds, uh, and then you know you can raid your uh, bathroom cupboard for the Q-tips. Um, but yeah, other than that, you know, it's not a big expense, but a lot of people do forget that you do need to consider these expenses when you're buying an airbrush. It's not just about the compressor and the airbrush and the hose. Um, the cleaning station is just for making sure that you uh, empty all of the paint out of the airbrush and so on and you can use it to test um, especially if you haven't got a sink nearby it's always good to have uh, have that kicking around we don't really need that in this particular video so what I'm going to be doing is focusing on the Neo airbrush and this is quite a common uh, airbrush in the industry a lot of people are using this and the first thing you've got to do is just fully strip it down so making sure that I know where all the parts are I've got some uh, white uh, kitchen roll in front of me here just uh, stripping it out so taking the back section off uh, the needle retainer the needle comes out and then the uh, the spring retainer that comes out the back of the airbrush that simply unscrews like that out comes that next section and then we just work on the front here, so just unscrewing all the parts at the front. Now this is really the, the business end of the airbrush, obviously this is where all the air and paint mix. And there's one last piece to remove and that is the fluid head nozzle itself. And this is where your little spanner comes into effect. This is also the most expensive component on an airbrush. So for my uh, custom Iwata airbrush, it's about £45 for this tiny little piece of engineering mastery. Uh, I think it's a little bit cheaper on some of the other airbrushes, but you have to be really, really careful that you don't mess the thread up on this. So being exceptionally careful uh, trying to undo this tiny component. But this key part is the source of 99% of blockages on airbrushes. So make sure that you are exceptionally careful when removing this component. You can see how small it is, do not lose it. Um, it will ruin your airbrush without it. It does not function without that, that component. You can see I've got a little bit of paint and all the rest of it around the um, gravity cup there. Not overly fussed about the outside. I do clean it from time to time, but it doesn't obviously impact anything else. It's just aesthetics. 
And the first thing we need to do is take our brushes and our cleaning fluid. There's a whole bunch of different sizes on here. Uh, pretty much I only use two of these because they're the ones that fit this particular size of airbrush. So the smallest one here fits perfectly down the down the muzzle of the of the airbrush really. So just ramming that down there and that really clears out all the gunk and that's where the paint and the air actually mix. So give it a good uh, good rodding and that will uh, produce a whole bunch of gunk that typically comes out of an airbrush especially if you've just been on a long airbrushing session. This airbrush is relatively clean um, but you'll see here as I wipe those, uh, those brushes on that bit of tissue paper that there is some residue still in there even after I've cleaned it um, intermediately before. So it is, does get pretty blocked up and that is essential because that's, that's another point of, point of blockage on the airbrush. The next part is just taking some more of that fluid, sticking it onto a, a cotton bud or a, a Q-tip if you're American, I think you refer to these as Q-tips, and then giving the, the well a good uh, rinse out there. You can see that changes colour pretty quick. I have been airbrushing some bases recently and that's uh, some residual uh, paint that's just sat in the bottom of that cup. And just give it a good, good clean out. And just take the other end then just to uh, mop up any other bits of gunk that are in there. Sometimes you do get flakes of paint that do cling in there. Um, always have a good look inside, see what you can see and make sure that you get those bits and pieces out because that does impact the airbrush. You also do get some gunk that does appear um, towards the back of the brush where the air is actually fed into the airbrush. So give that a good clean out the back as well. It just does build up over time, not, not anywhere near as bad as the front of the airbrush, but it does build up a little bit of gunk towards uh, over time. So just make sure that that's given a good clear out as well, as that's where the air comes into the airbrush through the uh, um, air hose from your compressor, and then barrels its way along the, the, the airbrush, mixes with the paint, and uh, atomizes out the front. Taking a key, another Q-tip again, another, I keep calling them Q-tips, I'm getting very Americanized here, just to give the um, that rear assembly a good clean as well. As I said, it does get a bit gunked up. Now one of the key points to look at here is where the where you press down on your thumb to actually activate the air. There's a little um, little valve that you're hitting with with that uh, with that trigger mechanism. And if that is not flowing uh, or not moving very well, then the air will just remain on because the the trigger will just stick. So you really need to make sure that you get that fully cleared out, give that a little bit of lubricant as well, make sure that that is flowing free and easy. And I'm looking down sort of the barrel of the airbrush now, you should be able to see all the way from top to bottom and see a clear path. You can see just about on my camera there, yep, just about there, all the way through the airbrush doesn't look like there's any further blockage or any gunk that has, that has built up. Next bit you want to make sure that the needle itself is nice and clear so I put a little bit of the cleaning fluid onto a bit of tissue and then just give that a wipe from the back end of the needle towards the tip. Needles do bend, um, no matter how careful you are you will often find that the end of the needle will, will bend and it only needs to be a fraction and that does impact the airflow and the, the way that the atomizing paint hits the model. So you'll always find that when you're cleaning it that way, if it does snag or catch on the tissue paper, you'll feel it really easily and you'll know it's time potentially for a new needle. All the other components then, just given a general clean, make sure they're all okay. Um, that particular piece I had cleaned recently, so that was looking fine. Um, and then you're sort of looking at the head matching components now. So just making sure that this particular part is just given a nice little clean. Um, and this is where the needle does traverse through that front hole of that. So you want to make sure there's no gunk and nothing built up in there that uh, doesn't need to be there. So giving the thread a good clean, you know, you can see it does. It's not a huge amount of gunk in there, but you know, it's one of these things that it will build up over time. So you need to make sure that you give it a nice little clean from time to time. Now 
Now we're going to move on to the fluid head nozzle itself. Now this is that tiny little piece, so I have zoomed right in on the camera here so you get a good view. You can see here the, the cleaning needle. Now my fluid head nozzle is pretty clean here, but this is the source of 99% of most airbrush problems. And this is why that tool has got a sort of a flat side and a, and a point on it. You want to make sure that that goes through the fluid head nozzle nice and clean. And you can use that flat edge to sort of scrape in and around that fluid head nozzle. It's not all about just that exit hole where the paint comes out, but just behind it is like a, it's almost like a, a cone shape. And you want to make sure that that is thoroughly clean because that is the source, as I said, of most blockages. And it would, the paint will just sit in there, flecks of paint will sit in there and it will just all build up and eventually it will be uh, unusable and your, and your paint will just uh, just not work. It just won't flow through the airbrush and it will just splatter and seize and bubble up and all the rest of it and it just won't work. So you really need to focus on that head nozzle, making sure that's nice and clean and we're good to go. Now as I did mention that little valve there that allows the air to come through, we need to make sure that that little um, valve does move free and easy. I'm using a um, a needle file here just to make sure that it presses down and releases nice and easy so so if it doesn't move uh, up and down freely then when you activate the trigger it will just stick and then you'll get free running air and you'll have no control over your airbrushing so again another key component make sure that is moving and if that's all good thumbs up we can reassemble the airbrush so all we're gonna do now is just put everything back together in the reverse order so starting off with that fluid head nozzle again you've got to be exceptionally careful screwing this back in so I start off by doing it by hand, making sure that it then takes on the thread and then we'll grab the little spanner and then tighten that up. Now don't over tighten it, make sure that you're just doing it sort of until it catches at that first biting point of being done up. If you over tighten it, you run the risk of damaging the thread and it will just break and then you'll be not airbrushing again because you'll have to uh, buy a replacement part. And as I said, on the high end airbrushes, that is very expensive to replace and you don't want to be doing that a lot so just as soon as it catches that's it don't over tighten it whatsoever um, otherwise you will damage it let's put the head back on and then we can uh, just put the rest of the airbrush back together What you can do at this stage is make sure you use a bit of the lubricant. So just to make sure that metal on metal is flowing nice and easy, moving nice and free, is stick a little bit of, uh, of silicon lubricant into there. I, I always put it in around this point here and then onto the needle itself, just sort of to the back of the needle and then make sure I push it backwards and forwards, let the lubricant do its thing. You only need a sort of a tiny amount of lubricant just to make sure that everything is, is nice and smooth. Last bit's going to back together then, and once you're uh, fully assembled, all you need to do is reconnect it to your air hose and make sure that you can push some water through it. I always make sure that water flows free and easy through the airbrush. I have a bunch of pipettes that I just use uh, to stick water into the gravity cup, give it a good spray, make sure everything is exactly as it's supposed to be, and then we're, uh, we're good to start airbrushing again. Quick test, make sure that everything is moving free and easy, and we are done. 
So there we go guys, that is one cleaned airbrush ready to get back into action and start painting your miniatures once again. So I hope you have enjoyed the video. Uh, if you did, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Uh, like, comment if you've got any other input that you'd like to add to that video. In case I've missed anything, I don't think I have. I have been airbrushing for around about a decade now, so fairly experienced, and that is that is good enough to keep me going. There are a couple of other components that you might want to consider when cleaning your airbrush. If you leave it for some time uh, between airbrushing, you may want to invest in a sonic cleaner, a sonic bath. I've got a fairly cheap one that I bought from Argos, I think, for about £30. And all that does is... is Agitate the paint that's really ground onto your airbrush. Um, I got mine, yeah, as I said, from from Argos, but there's plenty all over Amazon. Uh, they they are fairly cheap if you want a cheap one, but you can spend a lot of money on it. I don't think it's overly necessary. And as a bonus, if you are a happily married man and your wife has a nice uh, wedding ring or a nice engagement ring, it also doubles up as a good jewelry cleaner. So uh, you can always score some brownie points for giving the wife's jewelry a nice little clean. Uh, with that as well so uh, you can put it on your household expenses I'm sure I'm sure the wife would appreciate it um, but yeah hope you enjoyed the video and I shall catch you on the next one